In this video, I'll be going over the graphs of logarithmic functions. Now, our starting point here is to realize that an exponential function and a logarithmic function are inverses of each other. That means they are reflected about the line y is equal to x. So, what we can notice is that the y-intercept on an exponential function is 0, 1. There is no y-intercept on a log function. Instead, we have an x-intercept, and that occurs at 1, 0. So the x and y values are uh, swaps. So let's look at some of the characteristics of a log function. Um, it is 1 to 1, so that means it passes the horizontal line test. Um, there's a vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0, so the y-axis serves as the vertical asymptote. So while an exponential function had a horizontal asymptote, a log function has a vertical asymptote. Uh, the range is all real numbers, and the domain is 0 to infinity, so all positive numbers. And these are reversed between an exponential function. In an exponential function, the domain is all real numbers, and the range is 0 to infinity. Um, for a log function, as mentioned, there is no um, y-intercept, and there's an x-intercept of 1, 0. And then the b value, which is just the base, so here the base is 2 in the graphed function. So if the base is greater than 1, we'd say that the function is increasing. If the function is between 0 and 1, I'm sorry, if the base is between 0 and 1, the function would be decreasing. So for example, if I had um, h of x is equal to log base 0.5 of x, that's still going to go through the point 1 comma 0, but now the graph is still going to have a vertical asymptote of the y-axis, but the graph is going to go like this. Alright, in this example we want to graph the function f of x is equal to log base one-fifth of x. We want to plot two points. So let's find some ordered pairs here. So anytime we have a log function that is in this form, um, we can think of this as the parent function. So this is going to go through the point 1 comma 0. So when I input 1, we're going to get an uh, function value of 0. And we can check this because log of 1 fifth of 1, well what this means, say we're trying to figure out f of x is equal to, what this means is 1 over 5 raised to some value f of x is equal to 1. And anything raised to the 0 power is equal to 1, so that's how we get f of x is equal to um, 0 here. Okay, so we get 1 comma 0 as one of our points. Then the other thing we can do is, well, if I write this again as an exponential function, I have 1 over 5 raised to the f of x is equal to x. So let's plug in a value for f of x. How about 2? 1 over 5 squared, that's going to give us 1 over 25. So if f of x is 2 here, I get an x value of 1 over so I'm kind of going backwards because I'm changing the inputs and the output, or the, just the order of those. But when I rewrite the, the function in exponential notation, or in exponential form, this is going to make things a lot easier for us. Okay, so we get a function value of 2, and the x value is 1 over 25. So that's something like right here. Okay, so we know that there's a y-intercept... I'm sorry, a vertical asymptote of the y-axis, and the graph just goes something like that. It's hard to um, draw the function getting really close to the y-axis, um, but this is the idea. Alright, so we want to figure out what the domain is. Well, the domain, we have the um, vertical asymptote along the y-axis, 
so that means our smallest y value, I'm sorry, our smallest x value or our smallest input is, we can get really close to zero, but we don't include zero. So anything positive, and that goes to positive infinity. The range here is all real numbers. And then for the asymptote, here this is a vertical asymptote, so we're going to have x is equal to zero. Next, let's look at how we can transform logarithmic functions. First, let's look at vertical transformations. So, what we have here, um, now on the left side, here's our parent function, f of x equals log base b of x. So if we add a value to the outside of the function, that's going to um, raise the function by a value of d, or whatever we add. Similarly, if we start with this f of x function, and we subtract d, that's going to shift the function down d units. Okay, so that's probably not too surprising. Next up, we have a horizontal transformation. And so, if we are starting with f of x, when we add c inside the function, that's going to shift the graph to the left, c units. Um, on the right side, if we start with log base b of x, if we subtract c, that's going to move the function to the right. And what these graphs are showing is what happens to our um, kind of key points here. Um, the most key point being um, the x-intercept. So if we're adding or subtracting c, that's going to move that point, um, whatever value of c we have. So let's graph this function. f of x is equal to log base 4 of x minus 3 plus 2. First, let's consider what the parent function would be. The parent function has the same base, but it's just x. So what it looks like we have is a horizontal shift of 3 units to the right, a vertical shift of 2 units up. So let's first graph um, the g of x function. Now that's going to pass through the point 1, 0. It's increasing because 4 is greater than 1. And we know it passes through the point 1, 0. What's the second point that this passes through? Well, by writing this in exponential notation, or in exponential form, okay, so we saw that 4 to the 0 power is equal to 1. That gives us our first point. Then let's say, so that, let me just be clear here, that gives us 1 comma 0. Then let's say I um, have 4 to the first power. Well, that's just 4. So that gives us a point of 4 comma 1. So this point right here, 4 comma 1. So this graph, again, vertical asymptote at x is equal to 0. This is kind of tricky to do on the iPad. But that's going to be the parent function of this, um, the f of x function. So to transform this, what we need to think is, well, what are the transformations that are happening with the f of x function? And what we have is we are moving right 3 units, and up two units. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two points that we have and I'm just going to apply the transformation. So for the point 1 comma 0 I'm going to go right three units and up two. So we end up here. And then for the point 4 comma 1 I'm going to go right three and up two. So I end up here. So 1 comma 0 becomes 4 comma 2 and 4 comma 1 becomes 7 comma 3. Alright, and then if we think about what this vertical asymptote was, initially it was x is equal to 0, but I'm moving this right 3 units, so the new vertical asymptote is going to be at, it's going to be here. Okay, so this 
graph, the transformed graph, it's going to look like this. And that'll be the f of x function. Okay, so that's what the graph would look like. So when we're doing these, we want to start with the parent function and then get the key points from the parent function. And those are the points we want to uh, transform. Um, so let's come up with the domain for f of x. So the domain for f of x, well, the vertical asymptote is at 3, so we're going to say 3 to infinity, not including those endpoints. The range is still all real numbers. And then the asymptote, we're going to say, is x is equal to 3. Next up, we're going to look at vertical stretch and compression. So what we want to see is that if we have a leading coefficient here, if it's greater than 1, we're, that's going to vertically stretch um, the graph. If the leading coefficient is less than 1, or 1 over a, that's going to compress the graph. So what we notice is that the x-intercept does not change regardless of whether the graph is stretched or not. So similarly, if the graph is compressed, that doesn't change what the um, x-intercept is. So that's what this is saying down here. The x-intercept remains the same. So all that happens is that second key point is going to move, and we'll see that the graph either gets you know, steeper or more shallow. Looking at reflections, well, if we introduce a negative sign somewhere in the function, um, so if we have a negative value in front of the function, that's going to um, reflect the function across the x-axis. Okay, so f of x is the original function. If we introduce a negative in front, that's going to reflect. Um, and then we reflect about the y-axis. If we start with the f function, if we put a negative symbol or a negative sign inside the, the value of the function, and that's going to reflect about the y-axis or horizontal reflection. So let's look at this example. Let the parent function for each of the transform graphs be f of x is equal to log base 4 of x. Find a function for each graph. Okay, so log base 4 of x. That graph is going to pass through, oh, I'm sorry, it's going to be increasing. It's going to pass through the point 1, 0, and then 4, 1. So the graph of the parent function looks like that. So let's see what's happening. Let's start with A, which is the red graph. So what it looks like is the point 1, 0 becomes the point negative 1, 0. And then the point 4, 0 becomes, well, where, where else is the graph hitting one of these intersecting points? And it looks like right here, 2, 0. So if we compare what's happening between those two points, it's looked like, it looks like we have a shift of left two units. Okay, so if we wanted to come up with a function for a, we would say f of x, actually, how about a of x is equal to log base 4. Because it's the same parent function, it's always going to be base 4. And then we're shifting left two units, so that's going to be x plus 2. All right, why don't we look at the b function here. So the b function, we have the same x-intercept as the parent function, which is 1, 0. Um, we, have a, we have some sort of um, reflection, so we have a horizontal reflection. And then 
what else is happening? So it's kind of it kind of looks like if we take take the horizontal reflection first, that's going to make the graph look like this through the point one negative one comma zero. Uh, but then that's getting shifted to the right two units. So it looks like these are the two transformations we're going to be, <coughs> excuse me, reflecting that um, initial f of x function. That'll get us to this position. And then we're going to shift right two units. Um, so it looks like we would end up with Say our function is b of x log base 4 of, I would say, negative x um, minus 2. Let me think about that for a second. And actually, we would say plus 2. Um, so how you can think about this is if we do the, um, we can think of this as, Okay, so we're shifting to the right um, two units, and then we, we have the horizontal reflection. So that would take it into account. So this is what we'd have here. And then for the last one, the C function, well, what is happening? It looks like we have um, vertical reflection. We're flipping the increasing function upside down to make it a decreasing function and then we want to move the intercept point two units to the left. So this function c of x is going to be negative log base 4 of x plus 2. Alright, so there we have that. Yeah, that b function is a little tricky, what we ended up with right here. All right, and then lastly, let's graph this function. g of x is equal to 3 ln of x minus 9 plus 1. So the parent function here, let's call it f of x, is going to be ln of x. Okay, so remember, ln of x just says log base e. So that is going to be an increasing function. It goes to the point 1 comma 0. So this is e to the f of x is equal to x. So if I input 0 for f of x, I get an x value of 1. Okay. And then let's raise e to the first power. And I get e for the x. So e to the first is equal to e. Okay. So e is about 2.7. So somewhere like right here, let's call it. So that graph does something like that. So that's our parent function, f of x. Now let's consider all the transformations. So it looks like we are going right 9 units. And we're shifting up 1. And then we have a vertical stretch of three units. So let's consider the two points that we already have on the graph. We have um, 1 comma 0 and then we have um, e comma 1. So the first transformation is I'm going to be going right 9 units. So that's along the x-axis. So that's 1 plus 9 is going to be 10 comma 0. And then e plus 10 comma 1. All right, I'm just going to write e for now and then we can come up with an approximation. Okay, and then I'm going to go up one unit. Well, how do we want to think about this? Um, I think I'll apply the 3 next. So what that does is the 3 multiplies because it's a vertical ex um, um, expansion or stretch, that means the y value is going to stretch by a factor of 3. So that means I multiply the y value by 3. So in the first one, 
the y value is 0, so 0 times 3 stays at 0. And the second one, the y value is 1, so 1 times 3 becomes 3. And then lastly, I'm going to raise everything by 1, so the y value is going to increase by 1. So 10 comma 1, then we end up with e plus 10 comma 4. And I'm looking at my notes, and I made a mistake here. Um, I added 10 when I shouldn't have. Um, I got confused because I added 10, <coughs> or I was writing 10 for the first point. So really, this should be plus 9. There we go. You've probably been watching and... Um, screaming at your computer why I was getting confused. Okay, so these are the points um, we want to plot for the new function. So 10 comma 1, I'm going to be running out of space here, um, but 10 comma 1 is right here, and then e plus 9, well e is about 2.7, so we end up with about 11.7 comma 4. So 4 and then let's say something like right here. So sorry I'm kind of off the off the graph or off the grid paper but the graph is going to do something So, you know, it's not an exact science. We can label this point as uh, 10, 1, and then the other point up here we can label as about 11.7, 4. All right, so let's think of what the domain is. Well, the domain of the f of x function was 0, comma, infinity. Well, we shifted to the right nine units. So instead of an asymptote at zero, we now have an asymptote at positive nine. So this is going to be nine comma um, infinity. The range is going to be all real numbers. And if we have the domain right, we probably are going to get the asymptote correct. Me x is equal to um, And I noticed that this question um, also wants us to find the intercept. So we want to know what is this point right here? Well, it looks like it's between 9 and 10, but how are we going to find that? Well, Think about um, the original equation of the function. How do we find an intercept? Well, we set the y value, or the output, equal to 0. So I need to solve this equation. 0 is equal to 3 ln x minus 9 plus 1. OK, well, how about I subtract 1 and divide by 3? So I'm going to get one, negative 1 third is equal to ln of x minus 9. Well, to undo a log equation, to write an exponential, I'm going to take the base, raise it to the power, that is equal to x minus 9. Then I'm going to add 9 to both sides, so I get 9 plus e to the negative one third is equal to x, or 9 plus 1 over e to the one third is equal to x. We can get a decimal approximation of that. And when you type that into the calculator, you get about 9.7165. Okay, so the that point right there is going to be 9.1, sorry, 9.7165 comma 0 as the x-intercept. Or if you want to write it um, 
exactly, you could say 9 plus 1 over e to the 1 third, 